issues? And secondly, what role could nuclear power play in the current ISO uh, procurement process? Well, uh, already uh, nuclear provides our base load power, as I mentioned uh, in my remarks, uh, up to 60% of electricity every day comes from our nuclear fleet, either with OPG here at Pickering and Darlington, but also at the world's largest nuclear facility over at Bruce Power. Uh, when it comes to the ISO procurement for energy that's underway right now, particularly electricity, um, you know, we've been doing the work since last year to put together a competitive procurement uh, so that we're getting the new energy that we need. Uh, there have already been, from what I understand, 900 generators that have come to the table uh, with submissions for the midterm request for proposals that's underway with the ISO to provide about 2,500 megawatts that we know is going to be necessary in the short term, and that would be the next two years. And then we also have a long-term RFP, a request for proposals that's underway as well. Uh, when it comes to uh, natural gas fire generation of electricity, um, we have asked the ISO to consider an off-gas report, and they did come out with one earlier that showed uh, if we were to go off-gas uh, generation of electricity by 2030, it would uh, result in brownouts and unreliable, unreliability and also escalating electricity costs. Um, that's the last thing we want to see. Two of the key pillars in our energy policy with the Ministry of Energy are reliability and affordability, but also uh, clean and safe production of electricity, which nuclear provides. So nuclear is a part of our long-term plan. There's no question about it. We need nuclear, and uh, actually nuclear, as I mentioned earlier, is going to help us get to net zero. But the work on procuring new generation is already underway with the independent system uh, operator, electricity system operator, and uh, they'll be coming back to me, Alan, with the report in the next uh, short time with um, uh, the, the, the qualifiers in the uh, midterm RFP to provide that short-term production of electricity. Thank you, Minister. Uh, now, I do not have any other uh, questions on the live stream, but uh, Keith Gilligan from uh, Durham Metroland, uh, Keith wants to step up and ask a question. Uh, you're building one SMR. Are subsequent SMRs planned for this site? So, so, so maybe I'll, I'll start then, Jeff, if I could ask you to add a little bit to it. But uh, you know, we're going to design the site for more. So uh, physically, probably four units will be the design of the infrastructure to do it. But it's really important to get build one, build it right, build it on budget, on time, uh, because that ultimately is the license to build a second, a third, or, or however many fit onto the site. So with the team, I'm really clear. We're building a... Uh, GE attaches uh, reactor here, perfect it, and then we'll go from there. Similar to what we've done on refurb. Start with one unit, do a great job on it, and then start to refurb, refurbish the other ones as we go. And Jeff, I'm not sure if you want to add some perspective as far as the, the number of reactors more broadly. Yeah, I, I would just uh, uh, answer the question sort of from PVA's perspective. We're beginning, just like OPG, with a very disciplined process that should uh, be focused on delivering the first small modular reactor on time and on budget and learning and extracting all the lessons from that. Now, having said that, and speaking for TVA, uh, you know, our purpose isn't to build one reactor. It's to establish a technology in an industry that will support TVA building multiple reactors at multiple sites. And so we start with that end in mind. But as Ken said, the best way to build a fleet of reactors is to build the first one right. Which energy can an SMR produce in terms of megawatts? So I, I know you're going to. So it's a 300 megawatts. So if you look to the units behind us here now, so one reactor in Darlington is around 950. Uh, each of the uh, each of the machines here will be approximately 300 megawatts. So by, by almost the first part of the name, smaller, uh, but we also think the right technology to move towards with our GEH partners to to build. Do you have a price tag? Uh, One, one good thing about a price tag is this is why the planning is so important. And what Kareem uh, referenced here is we are going to spend the time uh, working through the technology with our technology partner, GEH.
spend a lot of time with TVA so that we can come back and say, here is the cost per kilowatt hour. But we think it is very, very competitive with any other form of technology that is an option. Then what you build here, TVA would copy chat in Tennessee? Uh, so I'll rephrase that, but uh, I think uh, you know, what we build here, our timeline, as Minister Smith said, is to have a unit operational by the end of uh, the decade, uh, hopefully a little bit sooner. And uh, rather than copycatting, I think we have a lot to learn from TVA. Uh, we'll bring those learnings into what we do, and then hopefully be between the two organizations, uh, we can teach each other a few things. Okay, thanks, Ken. I don't have any more questions online, but Andrew... Brennan from CTV has one follow-up question. I just thought I'd go for round two. Um, I just wanted to actually, for the people at home, um, talk, uh, at, try to ask a little bit about what makes SMRs so much, um, uh, make them the future. What are, are you know, are they overall cleaner? Um, what makes them uh, that much more special besides the, um, the smaller scale and the uh, a few other things that you've mentioned today? I just feel like it would be good to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, may, maybe I'll start, and then Ken and the minister may want to comment. So, you know, we have 50 years' worth of operating history in nuclear power, and in the, in the U.S., in here in Canada, you have tremendous experience with heavy water reactors and in the, in the U.S. light water reactor experience. And these designs today are extremely safe and extremely cost-effective. And what we're doing with this small modular reactor technology is taking that 50 years' worth of learning and making a safe and cost-effective design even safer and even more cost-effective by making it simpler, by making it passive, by, by making it robust. Uh, the nature of a small reactor also makes it easily within the capability of existing industry and supply chain to deliver reliably. It also gives you a simpler, shorter, and lower cost execution schedule. And lastly, I would say it builds a very flexible resource uh, where if you build multiple copies of it, you can shape the power to the load much more easily and, and build a fleet of services that can maintain that position in the long term. Those are some of the advantages we see in this at TVA. And I, I say just to pick up on what uh, what Jeff mentioned is, uh, you know, it, it is technology advancement. Like I say, the, the reactors we have in Ontario currently at Pickering, Darlington, Bruce Power, all incredible uh, uh, technologies. They're reliable. They're safe. They are uh, serve a purpose in the community from a green energy standpoint. And now it's a case of, of, of taking the technology advancements and utilizing them them so they can have a broader application across the province, across other countries, uh, to be able to do it. So I think just net good for uh, advancement in technology, as is with a lot of things. And I would just close on that by, by saying, and, and a bit of a follow-up to the previous line of questioning as well, uh, this 300 megawatt small modular reactor is a, is a grid scale uh, modular reactor. and is enough really to power a city about the size of 300,000 people. So I always compare it to uh, London, Ontario. Um, this, this small modular reactor that we're going to be building on site here at 300 megawatts could, could power a city like London and many others. Uh, but there are many other applications for a project like this. And, uh, you know, we will see these um, small modular reactors not just built here on this site in Ontario and, and inside the TVA jurisdiction, but Saskatchewan has already come to the table uh, looking to uh, purchase and uh, implement the small modular reactor that we're building here in their jurisdiction so they can do what Ontario has already done and get off coal fired generation of electricity. Uh, there have been MOUs signed with companies from Poland, um, Synthos Green Energy. We had the announcement uh, down at uh, BWXT in Cambridge back before Christmas that they're interested in purchasing 10 of these small modular reactors that we're building with GE, Itachi, and OPG, and now TVA on this site here as the collaboration continues to phase out coal in one of the heaviest emitting jurisdictions in the world, in Poland, and help them clean up their emissions. And we have had so many meetings, and I know Ken and the team here at OPG have as well, with jurisdictions 
around the world that want to have their own energy autonomy and their own energy security. Given the current events in Ukraine, uh, there are a lot of countries in Eastern Europe in particular that are looking for technology where they won't be reliant on Russian natural gas and they can look after their own energy needs in a way that is safe and flexible and uh, reliable. And I think that's what it comes down to is the reliability of our nuclear fleets here in Canada and the safety that we've been able to show around the world. So this is a tremendous opportunity here for us in Ontario as first mover on this project uh, to be able to develop the first grid scale small modular reactor. It's going to benefit local customers here in Ontario. It's going to help us supply the power that we need on our grid by 2028. It's going to create great paying jobs and it's great to see Bill Walker here, the new CEO of the Organization of Canadian Nuclear Industries, because so many of his members are going to benefit because of this project as well and the development of the SMR and then the deployment of this SMR in other jurisdictions around the world. So this is a real win-win and as I like to say every time and I haven't said it today, the world is watching what we're doing here in Ontario when it comes to small modular reactors. Okay, thank you very much, Minister. That's it for the uh, media Q&A, so I'll hand it back to Nicole. Thank you, and I'll close off by just saying thank you for coming today and look forward to our next meeting on this side about our next announcement. Thank you.